the fantasy world of martial arts. Unprecedented divine skill, divine weapon, wielding a sword in white clothes, carrying beauty in the martial world. Swordsmanship, love and hate, leaving behind touching and tearful legends, ultimately leading to an immortal myth. Time-traveling martial arts in reality. Zhao Mingyuan hesitated as he looked at the exorcism sword manual in front of him. Are you practicing or are you practicing? Consolidate the foundation with pride and strive to become the number one in the world. In the midst of Lu Xiaofeng, he indulged in his life and left behind the reputation of a golden young master. Facing the ruthless and passionate flying knife in Xiao Li's flying knife. How many good sisters do you have in the Tianlong Babu? In the double dragons of the Tang dynasty, I will also choose an emperor to try. In the bright moon of the Qin dynasty, may I ask if this destiny can be reversed. In the turbulent sea, do not use the hidden dragon. In the midst of storms, dominate the world. To be continued. Keywords of the novel. Changyu Wuxia Tianwu pop-up window, Changyu Wuxia Tianwu TXT complete collection download, Changyu Wuxia Tianwu latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Huashan Divine Training. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Huashan Divine Training Between the Verdant Mountains and Forests, the sound of sword sounds could be faintly heard. I saw a young man practicing swordsmanship in the mountains and forests. His sword was as bright as flowers and snow, flying all over the sky. It seemed leisurely, but in reality, it was as fast as lightning, as graceful as a god. This young man has a tall and slender figure, wearing the common wide sleeved Taoist robe. He has a thin face, but he is full of energy. A pair of dark and bright big eyes, paired with a pair of sword eyebrows, give people a different feeling. However, Zhao Mingyuan turned out to be a traveler from China. After reincarnation as an orphan, he was adopted by Yu Buqiuan and became the third disciple of the Huashan sect. There are also golden fingers necessary for passers.by, but they are not very awesome. Only a system that completes tasks can traverse the world, and the only task is to become the number one in the world. What can he do? He is also very desperate. Is it so easy to become the number one in the world? There are millions of people in the martial arts world, who doesn't want to become the number one in the world. But there is only one number one in the world. Fortunately, not many people died in the early stages of Xiao Jianghu world, as long as they stayed in Huashan, it would be safer. Zhao Mingyuan is planning to stay on Mount Hua for now, and when the development is almost complete, he will go down to pacify the world. After all, there is only one destiny, and this garbage system doesn't have any resurrection measures. If you accidentally encounter any danger and get hung up, it's not a big loss. Fortunately, it's also a system. Maybe in the future, we can also become immortals and ancestors through it. At this time, we can't afford to make waves. Actually, becoming the number one in the world is both difficult and simple. After all, following the plot, it wasn't long before the Eastern Invincible, the wind was clear, and Yubuchuan, the left cold Zen and other experts died, old and old. It can be said that as long as it surpasses Ling Hu Chong in the later stage, it is almost the best in the world. Of course, as the protagonist with extraordinary luck, it is not easy to surpass Ling Hu Chong in the later stage. There are three divine skills that can be called cheating tools in the world of Xiao Jianghu. The Sunflower Classic, the Star Absorbing Technique, and the Duga Nine Swords. The Exorcism Sword Technique can only be considered an incomplete version of the Sunflower Classic. In fact, the Yi Jin Jing of Shaolin Temple and the Tai Chi Jing of Wudang sect may not necessarily be inferior to them. The reason why these three techniques are called cheating tools is that practicing these three techniques can be achieved quickly, which is their strength. And the protagonist Ling Hu Chong is second only to none, coupled with the Shaolin Temple's Yi Jin Jing, it can be said to have almost no shortcomings. It's not easy to beat him. After thinking for a long time, Zhao Mingyuan finally came up with a flaw in Ling Hu Chong that was not his fault. 
The so dot called essence, chi, and spirit are the three treasures of human body. The main purpose of the Xiaoao Jianghu world is to cultivate qi. Linghu Chong cannot use internal skills when suffering from internal injuries, and has no strength, even inferior to ordinary people. Perhaps it is because he is accustomed to using internal energy to fill his entire body and is driven by it. Once he cannot use his internal energy, his body's functions will deteriorate and his strength will be mediocre, even inferior to that of ordinary people. It indicates that the world of Xiaoao Jianghu does not pay much attention to refining, or believes that external body refining techniques such as golden bell mask and iron cloth shirt are relatively low dot level, and the cost dot effectiveness is not as good as refining qi. As for practicing gods, there are almost no methods or techniques for practicing gods in the world of Xiaoao Jianghu, so there is no need to consider it at all. Of course, with abundant energy and profound internal skills, even without practicing divine skills, divine elements can naturally grow. So to win against Linghu Chong, we need to engage in differentiated development and balance our energy in energy. The so dot called refining is to train physical strength. The ancients did not attach great importance to this, but as a modern person, Zhao Mingyuan still has a basic understanding of fitness knowledge. Unfortunately, the Huashan sect does not have a body refining technique, otherwise it can be practiced. Every morning, I climb the mountain to watch the sunrise, exhale and cultivate my true energy towards the newborn sun, and then practice swordsmanship. Starting from the basic movements of swordsmanship, I meticulously exercise. Every day, this requires a large amount of meat to supplement protein. Fortunately, although Huashan has declined, the land around it still belongs to the Huashan faction and is naturally cultivated by nearby tenant farmers. People who practice martial arts, as the saying goes, refine essence and transform qi, already consume a huge amount. The daily meat Huashan pie is still affordable. Therefore, even if Xiao Mingyuan had a larger appetite, it was not very conspicuous. In addition, Xiaoao Jianghu is ultimately a low martial world. You can understand it by watching the sword qi battle. In the world of high martial arts, as long as the true qi is strong enough, one can naturally be invincible. Looking at the world of Xiaoao Jianghu, the world's top martial arts player, Dong Fang Invincible, is just about emphasizing that all martial arts in the world are firm and unbreakable, only fast and unbreakable. The elegant Dugu Nine Swords also emphasized the importance of using a quick and slow technique, starting with the last move. So it's better to speed up and practice fast swords, which is the most suitable way for this world. Zhao Mingyuan, as a modern person, is very curious about internal strength. Accumulating internal strength bit by bit, gradually becoming stronger, giving a feeling of immersive cultivation in the game. Everyone can experience the joy of upgrading. Zhao Mingyuan, as an OCD patient who can sign for several years in any check that I end game, still has this perseverance. I have practiced my internal strength quite well. The swordsmanship moves can only be said to have a good foundation and excellent basic skills. But after all, there is no talent for swordsmanship like Ling Hu Chong. It can only be said that following the routine, being mediocre, sticking to conventions, and practicing quite proficiently. However, even so, Zhao Ming Yuan's swordsmanship is only inferior to Ling Hu Chong among his disciples. What is Zhao Ming Yuan's talent for martial arts? Not a genius, not too bad either. It should be said to be ordinary, otherwise it wouldn't have been accepted as a disciple by Yu Bu Chuan. However, Zhao Mingyuan is still an adult and knows how to work hard. Of course, I didn't actually put in too much effort, just compared to those children of the same age. And it's not that Zhao Mingyuan wants to work hard too much, it's just that he's just too bored. Life without a phone is really unbearable. I can't go play with those children and fight with wooden swords. Work at sunrise and rest at sunset. Number 996, number 007, no involution. It's much better here, I don't want to go back anymore. Let's make salted fish here. 
After all, Zhao Mingyuan can't play with those children, so when he has free time, he just flips through the treasure trove and reads medical books. After all, our worldview is different. We need to start learning and researching knowledge such as meridians, acupoints, and internal forces. After all, we will have to work in the martial arts world in the future and need to change our worldview. From this perspective, it is still good to lay a foundation in the world of Xiaoao Jianghu. Unexpectedly, the act of reading made Yu Buchuan very happy and relieved. After all, the gentleman's sword is someone who appreciates such profound connotations. However, as a result, there was a slight estrangement with the fellow disciples, and of course, it was just a distance, without any major conflicts. After all, the atmosphere of the Huashan sect is still good. Overall, master and mother are kind, brothers are harmonious, and martial arts gradually accumulate and become stronger. The air is fresh, the mountain springs are clear and sweet, and there is a strong wind covering the Huashan sect. The mountain is peaceful and stable, making people think that it will continue like this. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Ten Years of Grinding a Sword You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Ten Years of Grinding a Sword Time flies like an arrow, the sun and moon shuttle like a shuttle, like a white horse passing through a gap, ten years have passed in a blink of an eye. Zhao Mingyuan has not wasted these ten years in vain. The cultivation methods or imagined methods seen in various martial arts novels have been tested and trained. Like Yang Guo's water practice swordsmanship, sword piercing leaf technique, extreme training, and sword pulling and chopping techniques, there have always been attempts, some successful, some failed, and some ineffective. Zhao Mingyuan repeatedly summarized his experiences and lessons, and revised his training plan. Every day at dawn, Zhao Mingyuan starts climbing the mountain. After climbing to the mountaintop, even when exhausted, he didn't rest. Instead, he crossed his knees to meditate and practice internal skills, until his meridian swelled and his qi penetrated the sky before turning to practicing swordsmanship. From the basic posture of swordsmanship to the basic swordsmanship, practice diligently every day without interruption. From barehanded mountaineering to tying sandbags, carrying heavy swords, and wearing inner armor, one can climb the mountain step by step like walking on a flat ground. Over the past decade, Zhao Mingyuan's progress can be described as accumulating mountains and rivers, and even he himself does not know to what extent he has trained. Especially when going up and down the mountain all day, Zhao Mingyuan made remarkable progress in his lightness skills, which made him quite proud. After all, he wandered in the martial arts world. If he couldn't fight, he could still run. If he couldn't run, he would have to wait until he died. In terms of strength, it is somewhat exaggerated to say that the strength exceeds a thousand jun, but as the strength grew, Zhao Mingyuan felt that the Huashan-style long sword was too light, so he practiced heavy swords. From the beginning when lifting was still difficult, to practicing basic swordsmanship. Until now, waving as usual, as if there is nothing. Although Xiao Mingyuan does not understand the mystical concept of lifting weights as if they were light or as if they were heavy, and dare not compare himself to the divine sculpture hero who practiced heavy swords sixteen years later, the heavy swords have no sharpness and are not exquisite. Can you withstand the power of this sword, which weighs a thousand pounds? After all, this world of Xiaoao Jianghu is just a low martial world. From the peak battle between Ling Hu Chong, Ren Wuxing, and Dong Fang Bubi in the original work, it can be seen that even if your swordsmanship is divine and your internal skills are unparalleled, as long as you are not fast enough, only I can hit you, but you cannot hit me. In this world, all martial arts are unbreakable, only fast and unbreakable is the way of heaven. Those who follow the sky will escape, those who go against the sky will labor, and Zhao Mingyuan naturally will not go against the sky. Therefore, since Zhao Mingyuan was able to wield and howl with his heavy sword, he did not continue to train his strength. Instead, he practiced his ordinary long sword again, but felt as if he had nothing in his hand. If you practice swordsmanship again, it will be like a storm. 
In addition to the advantages of lightness skills and specialized sword drawing skills, Zhao Mingyuan believes that if one is unprepared, even a master like the 13 Tai Bao of the Songs Han sect can be enchanted with one sword. Of course, the outcome of a direct confrontation with the enemy is still unknown. It's not that Zhao Mingyuan slowed down his internal power cultivation. In fact, strength and speed are closely related to the strength of internal power. The higher the skill, the faster the attack, and the stronger the strength, and vice versa. Therefore, Zhao Mingyuan will never sacrifice the essence for the end. Moreover, if Zhao Mingyuan really prioritizes practicing swordsmanship and disregards internal strength, he is afraid that Yu Buqiuan will think that he has gone astray and taken the old path of the sword sect, wanting to clean up the door. Zhao Mingyuan didn't originally intend to change the plot. After all, according to the Law of Infinite Terror, changing the plot can earn greater rewards, but at the same time, according to the principle of equivalence, high risk and high return. Obtaining more rewards inevitably requires bearing higher risks. Why bother wandering around when your potential is not yet realized, even though you have unlimited potential? Isn't it okay to stick to it? When the development is mature, it would be great to push again. When the time comes, there is no need to worry about how to wave. But who made them give too much? Zhao Mingyuan never expected that Yu Buqiuan would have the intention of making him the successor. Of course, it's just one of the candidates, after all, Ling Hu Chong hasn't made any major mistakes yet. It's just that his temperament has made Yu Buqiuan a bit unhappy, worried that he won't be able to take on a major role. Of course, Ling Hu Chong is still the first candidate now, just adding a candidate. Moreover, Yu Buqiuan did not explicitly state it but privately revealed this idea to Zhao Mingyuan as encouragement, or perhaps just drawing big cakes, but it was already quite rare. As a result, there has been a significant change in treatment, only under Ling Hu Chong and Little Junior Sister. As for Shenyang Ning Zhongzi, that's not to mention. Of course, Shenyang is very kind to everyone and doesn't take special care of her. But that's enough, it's enough to make Zhao Mingyuan feel a considerable sense of belonging to the Huashan sect. In this situation, can Zhao Mingyuan still watch helplessly as the Huashan faction slowly enters the fate trajectory of the original work, and then all members are tragically affected? Yeah, besides the protagonist Ling Hu Chong, who in the end of the Huashan sect is not a tragedy. The main characters are almost extinct, with a clear and secluded atmosphere. The Huashan sect has been almost wiped out, leaving only one or two dragon sets as disciples to inherit the sect. Even Ling Hu Chong, does he really want to be the ultimate hero who turns the tide in the original work, or is he an ordinary disciple of Mount Hua? The answer is self.evident. What about myself? Do we turn a blind eye to those who lend a helping hand to us along the way, allowing them to fall into the abyss in order to reach the summit? Is this what I am asking for? Can I really enjoy my so dot called glory with peace of mind in the end? Zhao Mingyuan cannot be certain either. However, Zhao Mingyuan knew that no matter what, strength is the fundamental determinant of everything. Therefore, over the years, Zhao Mingyuan has been practicing diligently day and night, which has even made Ning Zhongzi worry about it. He has repeatedly advised him to balance work and rest. Yu Buqiuan repeatedly rebuked Ling Huchong for this, urging him to learn from his junior brother, not to be playful, not to drink alcohol, and to practice more martial arts. Ling Huchong probably also felt a sense of crisis. He practiced much more diligently than in the original work, and his martial arts were also higher than in the original work. Speaking of which, the Huashan faction is not too weak. Even if the wind is clear and unknown, just looking at the leader Yu Buqiuan and Lady Yu Ning Zhongzi on the surface, they are not weaker than the Hengshan sect. After all, the Hengshan sect only has two experts, Mr. Xiaoxiang Night Rain and Mr. Lu Jingfeng, who is about to wash his hands with gold. It's just that the Songshan sect is too strong. The leaders, Left Cold Zen and the Thirteen Supreme Guards of Songshan, combined with the Three Religions and Nine Streams recruited by Left Cold Zen, 
have a significantly larger number of experts than the other four sections. No wonder left cold Zen has the ambition to merge the five sacred mountains. In this situation, how could you Buchu and not worry about the future of the Huashan sect? Perhaps rescuing the Huashan sect may not be as difficult as imagined, but it is also by no means simple. Not long ago, the leader Yubuchuan arranged for his second senior brother Lao Dino and junior sister to go down the mountain to Fuzhou to inquire about the news. Zhao Minyuan understood that the plot was about to begin, and the wheels of fate had already begun to turn. Perhaps he should also do something. A few days later, there was news that Lu Zhengfeng from the Hengshan sect wanted to wash his hands in a golden basin and invited the Huashan sect to come and observe the ceremony. Yu Buchuan ordered his senior brother Ling Huchong to lead his fellow disciples to Hengshan for training. After ten years of cultivation in Huashan, Zhao Mingyuan is finally about to descend the mountain. This time, the wind and clouds met, and the dragon returned to the sea. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Emerging Sharpness You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Emerging sharpness Most of the disciples of the Huashan sect, like Zhao Mingyuan, were the first to descend from the mountain after apprenticeship. The journey was smooth all the way, and it was not easy to get into trouble when people along the way saw each other wielding swords, and no one dared to come and cause trouble. When he arrived near Hengshan, Ling Hu Chong, like the original work, sought someone to drink and entrusted the remaining martial brothers to Zhao Mingyuan. Zhao Mingyuan thought to himself that Ling Hu Chong would definitely save Yilin who had been abducted by Tian Buguang. This cannot be stopped, otherwise if the butterfly effect affects this matter and causes any accidents to Yilin, it would be too bad. Afterwards, following the route, we entered Hengshan City. It happened to rain lightly, so I went to a tea house to rest and drew the aggregation mark of the Huashan school in the corner, waiting for the master brother to come and meet. I didn't expect it to happen to be the tea house in the plot. Zhao Mingyuan listened to everyone's discussion about Lu Zhengfeng washing his hands in a golden basin. When he saw Mr. Mo Da's hidden sword in the Qin, the sword makes the sound of the Qin, in the night reign of Xiaoxiang, he cut off seven tea cups with one sword. Then he looked around and saw a hunchback with a plaster on his face. He thought it was Lin Pingji. He couldn't help but smile and silently ate his melon. Not long after, the second senior brother Laudi knew and the younger junior sister also came, and after chatting, they talked about the destruction of the Fu Wei escort agency by the Qingqing sect. I saw the hunchback gritting his teeth as he spoke, with a fierce expression on his face. At other times, he felt both ashamed and angry, his face changing inexplicably. Zhao Mingyuan looked interesting, but also had feelings of concern. Soon a group of people came over, and the old nun in front of her shouted loudly at the door, Ling Hu Chong, come out. I think this old nun must be Abbas Dingyi, the head of the Baiyun Temple in Hengshan. Her violent temper really lives up to its reputation. She opened her mouth and asked Xingxie from the Huashan sect to punish her. After a few words, she reached out and grabbed Yu Ling Shan. Zhao Mingyuan couldn't let her catch the little junior sister right away. He had already guarded against this move and waved his palm to separate them. Ding Yi was startled, but he also quickly responded and grabbed Zhao Mingyuan's wrist with his backhand. Unexpectedly, Zhao Mingyuan was already prepared and had already pulled Yu Lingshan to retreat. If Ding Yi's move failed, it would be difficult to pursue him again. Zhao Mingyuan entrusted Yu Lingshan to be taken care of by his fourth junior brother Liang Fa. He then turned around and respectfully bowed to Abbas Dingyi, saying, Zhao Mingyuan, the third disciple of the Huashan sect, is here to see senior uncle. Abbas Dingyi snorted and refused to answer. Zhao Mingyuan saw this and said, There may be other twists and turns in the matter between senior brother and senior sister from your sect, and it is unknown. If we all work together, we should quickly find two people to lead. I can guarantee that senior brother may have some absurd actions after drinking, but he is not from the same side as Tian Buguang. Senior uncle can rest assured. 
Moreover, Uncle Lu from the Hengshan sect is about to wash his hands in a golden basin, and I believe Master will arrive soon. At that time, Senior Uncle can discuss with Master in detail, and I kindly ask him to show his respect. Abbess Dingy's eyes widened and she said, Are you saying that I bully the small with the big? I have no intention of this, Senior Uncle. Before Zhao Mingyuan could finish speaking, Abbas Dingyi intercepted and said, What if I bully the small with the big? Take my palm first. As he spoke, he slapped forward. Zhao Mingyuan naturally knew that his internal skills were much different from that of Abbas Dingyi, and he dared not forcefully take this palm. He took a slight step back and softly said, offending, then drew his sword and unsheathed it. With a choking sound of the sword, Everyone only saw the flashing light of the sword, and the figure suddenly settled. At some point, Zhao Ming Yuan's sword tip had already pointed to Abbas Dingyi's throat, while Abbas Dingyi's palm was still in front of Zhao Ming Yuan's chest, and the two remained motionless. At this moment, two people on the street, holding oil paper umbrellas and lanterns, rushed over and shouted, Is this the divine nun of the Hengshan sect? Dingyi withdrew his palm and turned around, saying, I dare not, Heng Shan Dingyi is here. Who is this? Zhao Mingyuan quickly withdrew his sword and bowed to Grand Tutor Dingyi, expressing his apologies. But it turned out that these two people were disciples of Lu Zhengfeng from the Heng Shan sect, inviting everyone to go to Lu Mansion. That's right, after all, this Heng Shan city is the territory of the Heng Shan sect. Any disturbance or disturbance cannot be concealed from the Heng Shan sect. Abbas Dingyi glared at Zhao Mingyuan and said, I don't expect senior brother Yu to have such a disciple who is well behaved. I admire him. I only hope that your character can be as good as your swordsmanship. Don't learn from Linghu Chong. Zhao Mingyuan hurriedly said, I dare not dare not, it's all up to my senior uncle to take care of me. There was nothing to say along the way. Soon, various sects gathered in the Lu mansion, led by the five sacred sword sect, and each sect paid respects to each other. Then Mount Taishan sent to Huashan sect to accuse Ling Huchong of making friends with bandits and having a nest with Tian Buguang. After a while, Ant Yilin also came in and recounted the process of Ling Huchong rescuing her, and everyone finally understood the whole story. Afterwards, Lin Pingji paid his respects to Yi Mu Gaofeng, and the play of Chu Fi and teasing Yu Tsanghai was performed one after another like a horse watching a flower, which was overwhelming. During this period, Zhao Mingyuan was constantly soaring above the sky. At that time, the disciples around him praised and praised him for his confrontation with Abbas Dingyi. They ignored the screams of events happening around him and the criticisms of Master Brother's grievances. His fellow disciples around him were already familiar with the situation he was in, so they didn't pay much attention to it. Zhao Mingyuan was pondering in his heart that Ling Hu Chang's martial arts were slightly higher than those in the original work. According to Ant Yilin's description, the plot seems to be similar to the original work, and the injuries suffered by Ling Hu Chong do not seem to have changed much. This is quite strange, is it because of the influence of plain consciousness that brought the plot back on track or something? Not to mention the butterfly effect, intentionally changing the plot doesn't change. Why is it so difficult? Or rather, because there have been too few changes, quantitative changes have not yet accumulated into qualitative changes. Because Ling Hu Chang's martial arts have not undergone significant changes, for Tian Buguang, it has only changed from being able to withstand 10 moves to now being able to withstand 11 or 12 moves, so the changes are not significant. This kind of thing cannot be imagined by thinking alone, why not conduct an experiment? After all, it has a significant impact on the later stage, so it's better to confirm as early as possible. Zhao Mingyuan looked around and happened to see Chu Fian walking towards the backyard with Yilin's little nun. He understood that Chu Fian and the others were going to the Chu Nyu courtyard to save Ling Hu Chong, so he quietly followed. Quickly arrived at a courtyard with a small red lantern at the front of the door, and wrote three golden characters, Kun Yu Yuan. Speaking of which, Zhao Mingyuan has been in this world for so long, and it is still the first time he has seen Golan Academy. 
Zhao Mingyuan felt that he could go to Gulen in the future to hone his character and broaden his horizons. Then he heard the conversation between Chu Fian and Tian Buguang. Tian Buguang, this wicked person, deserves to die a thousand times, it goes without saying. However, his lightness skills are very good. In the martial arts world, only by choosing the wrong name and not the wrong nickname, the four characters, traveling alone for thousands of miles, already demonstrate the strength of Tian Buguang's lightness skills. Otherwise, due to his evil deeds, he would have been killed long ago. Zhao Mingyuan's move now, even if he can win, has no certainty of being killed. Let him be carefree for a while, it's important to save Ling Huchong. Zhao Mingyuan did not interfere with the development of the situation, but quietly followed behind Chu Fian and Yilin, waiting for Yilin to prescribe good medicine for Ling Huchong before pushing the door and entering. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Making a Big Fuss in the Jade Courtyard You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Making a Big Fuss in the Jade Courtyard Suddenly, someone pushed the door in, but it startled Chu Fian and Yilin. Zhao Mingyuan immediately stated that he was a disciple of the Huashan sect and came here for the sake of his master brother Ling Hu Chong. He thanked both of them for their treatment, which made them feel relieved. This kind of fireworks tower is a great inconvenience to your reputation. Please leave this place early. As for the senior brother, I will leave it to you. Please rest assured. Thank you for your kindness in treating the senior brother. There will be a generous reward in the future. Yilin didn't quite understand the location of the fireworks tower and looked at Zhao Mingyuan in confusion. It wasn't until she heard that it was causing great inconvenience to her reputation that she suddenly understood. Her face turned red with embarrassment and she lowered her head. Although Chu Fian is young, she knows more about human relationships and worldly wisdom than Yilin. After all, she was born and raised in the demon cult, but she doesn't care about it. Instead, she looks at Zhao Mingyuan with wide eyes as if she is not at ease with him. Yilin, if you don't go back, your master will come over, urged Zhao Mingyuan. Suddenly, someone from a high place outside called out, Yilin, Yilin. But it was the voice of Abbas Dingyi. Yilin was taken aback and was about to agree. Chu Fian flipped his left palm and held down Yilin's mouth, whispering in her ear, What is this place? Don't agree. In an instant, Yilin was completely disoriented. She was trapped in a trap and in an extremely awkward situation. However, when she heard her master's call and refused, it was something she had never done in her life. Zhao Mingyuan whispered, Don't worry, both of you. I'll find a way to distract them later. You can take my master brother away. Chu Fian was still about to speak when Abbas Dingyi had already started cursing with Tian Buguang outside. Not long after, even the leader of Qingqing sect, Yu Tsanghai, came and fought with Tian Buguang. Then Lu Jingfeng also came and suggested entering for a search. Soon, the sound of ping 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 rang out, getting closer and closer. Yilin was so anxious that she almost fainted. Chu Fian nodded helplessly and, together with Yilin, helped Ling Hu Chong up left and right. Seeing that the two were ready, Zhao Mingyuan rushed out and shouted at the battle circle of Yu Tsanghai and Tian Buguang, Give back my senior brother's life. Then he drew his sword and stabbed. Stinky kid, how dare you fight with me? Yu Tsanghai cursed but Zhao Mingyuan didn't distinguish between the two and directly incorporated them into the battle circle. Anyway, neither of them was a good person, killing anyone would be considered a good thing. Unexpectedly, Yu Tsanghai almost hit the sword without noticing for a moment. Tian Buguang chuckled and said, Ling Hu Chong was killed by a subordinate of your Qingqing sect. He came to seek revenge on you. Oh, what are you doing with me? It's clear that he killed Ling Hu Chong. Three people fought together to form a regiment. Yu Tsanghai has profound internal skills, and Tian Buguang's sword technique is exquisite. However, he always guards his door and dare not attack with all his might, 
fearing to be sandwiched by the other two with all his might. Zhao Mingyuan, however, did not suffer from this problem. Although his martial arts were slightly inferior to those of the two, his swordsmanship was even faster than Tian Buguang's sharp sword. Even with one strike and two strikes, he was able to attack more and defend less. In a moment, the three of them fought fiercely, making it difficult to distinguish between them. Tian Buguang saw more and more people coming from the right path, feeling anxious. He thought to himself that continuing to fight would only be more and more detrimental to himself. If he ran out of strength or was besieged, he was afraid that he would be more or less unlucky. The shortcut said, it's shameless to have two righteous experts fight each other, especially this dwarf. The leader of the Qingqing sect is not even as good as their second-generation disciples, and it really shames the face of the Qingqing sect. I, Tian, am ashamed to be with you, so I'll say goodbye. With a fierce slash, he retreated and disappeared in an instant. The name of traveling alone for thousands of miles is truly extraordinary. Seeing Tian Buguang escape, Yu Tsanghai shouted and wanted to vent his anger on Zhao Mingyuan. Lu Jingfeng quickly came forward to dissuade him, after all, Hengshan was his territory, and the Five Sacred Sword sect was united, but he couldn't watch the disciples of the Huashan sect get into trouble. Zhao Mingyuan was not worried at all. Lu Jingfeng and Abbas Dingyi next to him would not let him suffer, let alone according to the plot, Master Yu Buchuan was watching in the dark nearby. But suddenly I heard a voice coming from beside me, it's shameless to bully the small with the big. Everyone looked around, but it was a hunchback. It was the one who was in the Lu mansion before, but not who Lin Pingji was. Yu Tsanghai was furious and stepped forward to capture Lin Pingji with a palm. The palm held its strength but did not release it. With just one thrust of force, it could shatter Lin Pingji's internal organs and break his bones. But when he saw the wooden peak behind Lin Ping, he said, Wooden hunchback, what is your intention of repeatedly instructing the younger generation to come and make things difficult for me? However, Mu Gaofeng did not want to offend Yu Tsanghai for the sake of a stranger, so he immediately cleared his relationship. Lin Pingji saw that he had fallen into the hands of Yu Tsanghai and thought he would definitely die. He decided to curse and tear off the ointment from his face to remove his disguise. He loudly said, I am Lin Pingji from Fuzhou Fuwei Escort Agency. I killed your son for harassing a good girl, and you caused my family to perish. My parents, where are you keeping them? Everyone was taken aback, and then there was an uproar. The news of the Qingqing sect's downfall of the Fuwei Escort Agency has long been widely circulated in the martial arts world, and everyone has heard of it. The Lin family's exorcism sword manual has also been widely circulated. I didn't expect the main leader to be here. Upon hearing that this fake hunchback was actually Lin Pingji from the Fuwei Escort Agency, Mu Gaofeng immediately wanted to snatch someone from Yu Tsanghai's hands. Yu Tsanghai would not let him succeed. The two of them, one on the left and one on the right, pulled Lin Pingji's arms, only causing his bones to make a sound. Yu Tsanghai dared not exert any more force, afraid of pulling Lin Pingji to death on the spot. He immediately let go and drew his sword with his right hand to stab at the wooden peak. Mu Gaofeng was already prepared, still holding Lin Pingji with his left hand and pulling out a curved sword with his right hand. He fought alongside Yu Tsanghai and used Lin Pingji as a shield to resist his sword. Yu Tsanghai, who had not yet mastered the sword manual, dared not harm Lin Pingji's life and immediately retreated. Mu Gaofeng laughed and said, Thank you for your care. Master Yu is indeed a good friend. Yu Tsanghai snorted and led his disciples to retreat. At this moment, Abbas Dingyi was eager to find Yilin and had already searched westward with the group of disciples from Hengshan sect. Lu Jingfeng led his disciples to search the southeast. Zhao Mingyuan had already disappeared, but it turned out that he was going to confirm whether Chu Fian and his group had left safely. As soon as the Qingqing sect left, only Mu Gaofeng and Lin Pingji remained outside the Chuanyu Academy. Mu Gaofeng threatened and lured Lin Pingji, hoping to make him kowtow and pay his respects. 
Lin Pingji said that his parents were not by his side, but fell into the hands of the Qingqing sect, unaware of life or death. He wanted Mu Gaofeng to come and rescue him. Who would have thought that Mu Gaofeng would not be willing to work hard for him in Yutsanghai, even if he had to force Lin Pingji to kowtow an apprentice? Lin Pingji was already proud and used to being the head of the Shao Dart. He was only flattered by others and had never encountered humiliation. Even when forced by Mu Gaofeng, he stubbornly refused to bow his head. As Mu Gaofeng forced Lin Pingji to kneel and bow, Lin Pingji suddenly felt a surge of internal force entering his body. The pressure on his head suddenly eased, and he supported himself with both hands and stood up straight with his waist. But it turned out that the leader of the Huashan sect, Yu Buqiuan, was present. Yu Buqiuan revealed his internal skill cultivation, and Mu Gaofeng dared not make mistakes, so he retreated. Upon seeing this, Lin Pingji humbly bowed and knelt on the ground, constantly kowtowing, begging Yu Buqiuan to enter the gate wall. Yu Buqiuan politely refused and accepted it, promising to rescue Lin Ping's parents from the hands of the Qingqing sect. All the disciples of the Huashan sect came out to congratulate Master on the new disciples. Zhao Mingyuan also took the opportunity to come out and congratulate his master. Yu Buqiuan glanced at him but remained silent. Lin Pingji paid his respects to the senior brothers and Yu Lingshan. Yu Lingshan's wish to become a senior sister was finally fulfilled, and he couldn't help but be very happy. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Washing Hands in a Golden Bowl You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Washing Hands in a Golden Bowl The next day, Du Buqiuan led his disciples to visit Lu Mansion. Lu Jingfeng saw that the renowned master of the martial arts world, the Sword of Huashan, had personally arrived and quickly came out to greet him, without a chance to thank him. Yu Buqiuan had a refined and humble demeanor, with a smile on his face. Joining hands with Lu Jingfeng, they walked into the gate, and the experts present all stepped down to welcome them. Seeing this power, Yu Tsanghai dared not question him about Ling Hu Chong. Unexpectedly, Yu Buqiuan took the initiative to greet him, and Yu Tsanghai immediately bowed in return. After a few pleasantries, guests from Lu Mansion arrived one after another. At noon, I suddenly heard two loud bangs outside the door, followed by a loud drumbeat. That's really. The sound of gongs and drums, the sound of firecrackers, the display of red flags, and the sea of people. Lu Jingfeng immediately stood up. Go out and welcome each other. Shortly thereafter, an official dressed in official attire led the crowd in, accompanied by Lu Jingfeng with a respectful smile. However, the official stood tall in court, unfolded a yellow scroll, and loudly said, The imperial decree has arrived, and Lu Jingfeng has received it. Lu Jingfeng bent his knees and knelt down to listen to the instructions. After reading the imperial edict it was discovered that Lu Jingfeng was actually appointed as a general by the court. Afterwards, Lu Jingfeng kowtowed to show gratitude and was full of imperial grace. He was willing to die for his majesty, and even flattered and bribed the officials who issued orders. It wasn't until Lu Jingfeng, with a smile on his face, escorted the official outside the gate and fired gongs and cannons to bid them farewell that the heroes present finally came to their senses. Everyone looked at each other, but it was quite unexpected. However, this also shows that Lu Jingfeng's intention to wash his hands and withdraw from the martial arts world is very firm. Everyone wanted him to be an official with all his heart and aspirations, but this move was barely possible. Lu Jingfeng stood in the hall and said loudly, From today on, Lu Jingfeng, will wash my hands with gold and focus on my official career. As for the right and wrong in the martial arts world, I will never ask Lu. If I break this oath, there will be such a sword. With a flip of his right hand, he drew his long sword from the bottom of his robe, and with a flick of his hands, he broke the blade in two. Upon seeing it, all the heroes said, what a pity, what a pity. They didn't know if it was him who regretted this precious sword, or if it was a pity that a master like Lu Jingfeng was willing to defect to the government. 
Lu Jingfeng smiled on his face, rolled up his sleeves, reached out his hands, and was about to put them into a golden basin. Suddenly, someone outside the door shouted loudly, Stay! But it was people from the Songshan sect who came to stop Lu Jingfeng from washing his hands, led by his disciple Qian Zhang Song Shidengda. Although Lu Jingfeng didn't know why, he also stopped. At this moment, I suddenly heard a woman's voice in the back hall shouting, Ah, who are you? What are you doing? The crowd was taken aback, and from her accent, it was Chu Fian, a young girl who had lifted her arm with Yu Tsanghai a day earlier. I heard another man's voice proudly say, As per the orders of the alliance leader, we must keep an eye on the family members of the Lu family and not leave anyone behind. These few words were not very loud, but they were spoken with extraordinary arrogance. Everyone in the hall heard them and changed their color. Suddenly, a clear voice came, seizing women and children is not the right way in the martial arts world. However, Zhao Mingyuan had long anticipated this and came to the back hall early to prepare for any unexpected events. Zhao Mingyuan believes that Lu Jingfeng is indeed colluding with Chu Yang of the demon cult. But the two of them claimed that the Qin music intersected only to explore the rhythm. Although they did not do anything harmful, they did intersect, which is also a fact. However, the family members of Lu Mansion were innocent. Lu Jingfeng could see that his family had been slaughtered by the Songs Han sect, and he refused to reveal the word Chu Yan. Although it was a so dot called loyalty, he also regarded the pursuit of music as above all else, not even valuing the life of his entire family. Chu Yan, on the other hand, only saw as he watched the Lu family members being killed by the Songs Han sect, but only appeared to rescue Lu Jingfeng after all the Lu family members had already been killed by the Songs Han sect. He also threw the black blood god needle indiscriminately into the crowd, indicating that he was indeed a demonic leader who disregarded human life. Perhaps it is true that he and Lu Jingfeng intersect in rhythm, but he is a ruthless demon who kills without blinking an eye, yet it is also true. If the two of them die, they will die, but Zhao Mingyuan has no intention of saving each other. However, for the Lu family members, he wanted to save them, and if he didn't, his heart wouldn't be happy. Perhaps the so dot called righteous people present believed that colluding with the demonic cult should be slaughtered. Even if they couldn't bear it, no one said anything, but Zhao Mingyuan didn't think so. Ten years of sharpening a sword, the frost blade has never been tried. Today, I will show you that no one has any grievances. Zhao Mingyuan has been practicing swordsmanship for many years, but it is not for the sake of survival. He should take action when it is time to do so. The saying goes, with a sharp blade in one's heart, killing one's heart arises. In his past life, if Zhao Mingyuan encountered someone committing a crime on the street, he may not have dared to step forward, only the majority remained silent. But in this life, his years of cultivation have made him no longer silent. Most of the disciples sent by the Songshan sect to capture the Lu family's family members in the back hall are young and have average skills. After all, the Lu family's back hall does not have many experts, which is enough. Among the younger generation, the Songshan faction has already surpassed the Hengshan faction. Among the younger generation, Ling Hu Chong and Zhao Mingyuan can be said to have surpassed the others in terms of skills. It can be said that they are the unparalleled double pride of the younger generation and can now compete with the previous generation slightly. Among contemporary young people, there are few opponents, so Zhao Mingyuan's move is to crush them. Zhao Mingyuan's sword remained unsheathed, regardless of how their moves changed. Despite being surrounded by several people, they couldn't escape Zhao Mingyuan's simple move. Listening to the constant howls, Zhao Mingyuan leisurely walked through the shadows of knives and swords in the courtyard. He waved his sword sheath and shook the long swords of the disciples of the Songs Han sect away, then turned around and sealed their acupoints with his sword sheath. A few disciples of the Song Mountain sect later saw the situation exposed, and the incoming person had high martial arts skills, making it difficult to succeed in the mission. On the one hand, he threatened that they were sent by the leader of the five sacred sword sect, Zuo Lengshan, 
to arrest the day of colluding with the demon cult. If they obstructed, they would be enemies with the righteous path. On the other side, taking a desperate risk, they rushed towards the Lu family members, intending to kidnap them and make them wary of the enemy. Zhao Mingyuan would never be threatened by them. Seeing them rushing towards the Lu family, he showed no mercy. Zhao Mingyuan drew his sword and unsheathed it, his body flashing like lightning and his sword thundering like thunder. He could only hear the sounds of ouch and ouch coming together. Upon closer inspection, except for those who had been sealed by Zhao Mingyuan from the beginning, none of the remaining disciples of the Songs Han sect were standing, all crying in pain and rolling on the ground. It turned out that although Zhao Mingyuan was angry, he still avoided the blade and only used the back of his sword to strike, but also used heavy techniques to break a few of their ribs, afraid of lying in bed for several months. To prevent any more disciples of the Songs Han sect from coming, Zhao Mingyuan simply asked the Lu family members to come directly to the front hall and let the heroes of the world evaluate and reason. In front of heroes from all over the world, the Songs Han sect dare not take action against women and children. If they really have such boldness, it will be useless to hide anywhere. For the Lu family now, that is the safest place. The Lu family members were frightened, and it was during the time when the six gods were at a loss that they were grateful and obedient to Zhao Mingyuan. Everyone was escorted by Zhao Mingyuan and went to the front hall together. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Zhengye Moya You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Zhengye M.O.Yi Upon hearing the sound in the backyard, Everyone in the Songs Han sect knew that there had been a change in the situation. When they saw the Lu family safely arriving in the front hall, but none of the disciples from the Songs Han sect who went to the back hall came, they knew that there had been a change in the plan and the situation had been exposed. Listening to the Lu family members publicly recounting the evil deeds of the Songs Han sect, Abbas Dingyi was furious and immediately expressed her intention to take control of them questioning why the Songs Han sect was so arrogant. The disciples of the Hengshan sect, such as Xiang Dani and Mi Yui, quickly blocked the Lu family and separated them from the others of the Songs Han sect. Yu Buqiuan saw Zhao Mingyuan coming forward with the Lu family members, so he took a step forward and blocked in front of Zhao Mingyuan and the Lu family members. He said, the actions of the Songs Han sect are indeed against the right path. Even the evil sects and demonic sects know that the struggles in the martial arts world do not involve women and children. How could anyone wield swords and guns against their families like the Left Alliance leader? Not to mention within the Five Sacred Sword sect. How can such actions convince the heroes of the world? How can one become the leader of the Five Sacred Sword sect? Seeing that Huashan sect and Hengshan sect both stood on the side of Hengshan sect against Songshan sect, Taoist priest Tianmen of Mount Taishan sect also came forward to support it, saying that Songshan sect's trip was really too excessive, and must give an explanation. Seeing this situation, the Songshan sect had no choice but to directly accuse Lu Jingfeng of colluding with the demon cult, and also say that Lu Jingfeng must be severely punished for betraying legitimate interests. Upon hearing this news, everyone couldn't help but be shocked. Lu Jingfeng is the second most important figure in the Hengshan sect, and his position within the sect is only under the leadership of the leader, Mr. Xiaoxiang Night Rain. What can he gain by colluding with the demon sect? Besides, it's like washing your hands in a golden basin, it doesn't look like it. Humph. This is exactly the cunning of the bandits in the demon sect. They say they want to wash their hands with gold, but in fact, they want to go into the dark. No one can guess that the person who betrayed the righteous path is actually him, said Fei Bin of the Songs Han sect. The group thought to themselves, there is indeed some truth to this, but empty words have no basis, and there must be evidence. You can't just convict Lu Zhengfeng on this, it goes against the justice of the martial arts world. Fei Bin turned his head to look at his third senior brother Lu Bai, waiting for him to speak. Lu Bai whispered softly, Senior brother Lu, there is a protector elder in the demon cult named Composer Yang. 
Do you know Senior Brother Lu? Lu Zhengfeng was originally very calm, but when he heard him mention the word Chu Yang, he immediately changed color, his lips tightly closed, and did not answer. Thousands of people's eyes were focused on his face. Everyone felt that whether Lu Zhengfeng answered or not was the same. Since he couldn't answer, it was equivalent to agreeing. After a long time, Lu Zhengfeng nodded and said, Not bad. Chu Yangtzu, I not only know him, but also he is my only confidant and best friend in my life. In an instant, the hall was filled with noise, and the crowd was discussing. Lu Zhengfeng's few words were unexpected, and everyone guessed that if he didn't deny or deny them, he would only admit that he had met Chu Yang once. It was unexpected that he would say that the elder of the demon sect was his close friend. Fei Bin's face showed a smile and he said, Admit it yourself, that's never good. A man can do things alone. Lu Jingfeng, the left alliance leader has decided on two paths, and it's up to you to decide. Fei Bin said in a loud voice, the left alliance leader said, Lu Jingfeng is a rare talent in the Hengshan sect. He mistakenly befriended bandits and went astray. If we can deeply repent, we are all good friends in the chivalrous path. How can we not be kind to others and give him a path of rejuvenation? The left alliance leader instructed his brothers to convey to Lu's senior brother, if you choose this path, you will be limited to killing the elder Chu Yang of the demon sect within a month and bringing your head up to see him, then the past will not be investigated. In the future, we will still be good friends and brothers. The heroes all thought. Good and evil are not at odds. The heretics of the demonic cult would fight to the death with chivalrous figures as soon as they met. The main leader of the left alliance, Lu Jingfeng, killed Chu Yang to clarify his intentions, which is not an excessive demand. However, Lu Jingfeng said, Lu and brother Chu are just like dot-minded, intersecting in terms of music and temperament. Most of the time we meet, we are in harmony with Qin and Xiao, and we never discuss martial arts. I believe Brother Chu has a noble and pure temperament, and is not someone who harbors evil intentions. I cannot do such a thing, and I will never harm him. Allowing Fei Bin to use both soft and hard tactics, and with the persuasion of various heroes, Lu Zhengfeng made up his mind to stay out of the martial arts world and not care about worldly affairs. Fei Bin displayed the flag of the leader of the Five Sacred Sword sect and said, People in our martial arts world have always been at odds between good and evil. Lu Jingfeng is a bandit, and if you don't agree to kill Chu Yang within a month, the Five Sacred Sword sect will have to immediately clean up its doors to avoid future troubles, eradicate the root cause, and show no mercy. Think about it again. Lu Jingfeng gave a dismal smile and said, The key to making friends with Lu is to show mutual respect. How can we kill our friends in order to protect ourselves? Since the left alliance leader is unwilling to forgive us and Lu Jingfeng is alone, how can we resist the left alliance leader? Your Song's Han sect has already arranged everything, and I'm afraid even Lu's coffin has been bought. If we want to take action, we will take action immediately. When will we wait? Fei Bin said, if you're both stubborn and stubborn, then there's nothing you can do. Take action. With a loud shout, all the disciples of the Songs Han sect went to kill Lu Jingfeng's family. This move surprised everyone, and no one expected the Songs Han sect to do so. I used to think that the Songs Han sect would only kill Lu Jingfeng, but judging from Lu Jingfeng's performance, he also had the intention to die, but I didn't expect that the Songs Han sect would actually harm his family. For a moment, Xiang Danian and Mi Yui, who were standing in front of the Lu family, had already fallen into a pool of blood, revealing the children of Lu Jingfeng behind them. It seemed that they were also facing an unexpected situation. Fortunately, at this moment, a sword came across and blocked the two of them, but it turned out to be Zhao Mingyuan. Seeing someone take action, everyone woke up like a dream. Abbess Dingyi was furious and swung her palm to attack Di Xiu from the Songs Han sect, cursing, beast. Lu Jingfeng also snatched his disciple's sword, and with one hand, 
he used the 13 moves of cloud and mist in Hengshan to create a virtual and real world that was like a dream, which was eye-opening. Ding Mian bypassed Abbess Lu Zhengfeng and attempted to directly capture the Lu family members, forcing Lu Zhengfeng to comply. Unexpectedly, Yu Buqian stood in front of him and said, Junior brother Lu is indeed at fault and has gone astray. But this is a matter of Lu Zhengfeng's own and has nothing to do with others. There is no reason to harm his family. How can we take action against women and children? Moreover, the Five Yu Sword sect is united. How can the Left Alliance leader kill people from the Hengshan sect without authorization? Lu Zhengfeng should be arrested first, the truth should be found out, and Mr. Mo from the Hengshan sect should handle it. How can we abuse our private actions? After hearing this, everyone thought what Yu Buqian said was reasonable. The Taoist priest of the Tianmen sect of Mount Taishan sect also came forward and said, this is reasonable. It's better to listen to the leader Yu and leave it to the Hengshan sect to deal with. I think Mr. Mo should understand the debate between right and evil, and he will not tolerate the foster care. Chen Bo snorted and said, those who collude with the demonic cult should be exterminated as a warning to others, to pay homage to those who were killed by the demonic cult. This is justice. Lu Jing, the daughter of Lu Zhengfeng, angrily cursed, evil thief, your Songshan sect is ten thousand times more evil than the demon sect. Justice. How many sins have falsely claimed your name? Zhao Mingyuan thought to himself, this sentence is truly a wise saying. Seeing that the members of the Songshan sect were still about to take action, the two sides faced off and were about to explode. Lu Jingfeng said in a loud voice, It's okay, it all started with me, let's end with me. Lu begged for an end, so there's no need to harm his life. His left hand crossed the long sword and he wanted to commit suicide. At this moment, a figure in black suddenly swept down from the eaves, moving like the wind. With a stretch of his arm, he grabbed Lu Zhengfeng's left wrist and whispered, Let's go. Then he grabbed Lu Zhengfeng and ran towards the outside. Lu Zhengfeng exclaimed in shock, Brother Chu. You. Upon hearing him call out the three words, Chu de Gu, the heroes were all shocked to know that the man in black was the elder of the demon sect, Chu Yang. Ding Mian and Lu Bai clapped their palms together and patted their hearts behind them. Chu Yang shouted to Lu Jingfeng, hurry up. He slapped Lu Jingfeng's back with his palm, while also exerting his energy on his back. He was hard hit by the combined force of Ding Mian and Lu Bai, two great masters. With a loud bang, Chu Yang's body flew out, followed by a mouthful of blood spurting out. He swung his hand back and forth, and a bunch of black needles scattered like rain. Ding Mian shouted, Black Blood Needle, quickly dodge. He quickly dodged to the side. Seeing this cluster of black needles and hearing the name of the black blood divine needle of the demon cult for a long time, the heroes were all shocked. You retreated and I dodged, creating a chaotic scene. They only heard, oh no, and not good, more than ten people shouted in unison. The hall was crowded with people, and there were many and fast black blood divine needles. After all, there were still many people who had been poisoned by the needles. In the chaos, Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng had already fled far away. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Laughing Proud in the Jianghu You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Laughing Proud in the Jianghu Watching the figures of Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng disappear, Zhao Mingyuan thought to himself that the plot of their joint performance of the laughing and proud Jianghu song would surely unfold as scheduled. Since the two of them have escaped, the Songshan sect has no reason to make trouble for the Lu family anymore, so they have no choice but to give up. After all, the Lu family members also belong to the Hengshan sect, and there is no reason why the Songshan sect cannot move them. Zhao Mingyuan finally calmed down and used the excuse of searching for his senior brother Ling Hu Chong to report to his master Yu Buqian. Yu Buqian looked very focused on his newly recruited disciple Lin Pingji, who always carried him with him wherever he went. 
he only nodded at Zhao Mingyuan's actions. Zhao Mingyuan asked the locals about the location of the nearby waterfall and immediately rushed there. Sure enough, not long after leaving the city, I heard the sound of the waterfall flowing. Before approaching, I could faintly hear the sound of Qin and Xiao. The two notes fluctuate high and low, and suddenly the sound of the Qin and Xiao suddenly changes, just like seven or eight Yao Qin and seven or eight Dong Xiao playing music at the same time. Although the sound of Qin and Xiao is extremely complex and varied, each sound is rhythmic and pleasing to the ear and heart. Suddenly, there was a loud and rapid sound, and the sound of the Qin stopped. The sound of the Xiao also stopped. In an instant, there was silence all around, except for the bright moon in the sky and the shadows of trees on the ground. Zhao Mingyuan approached and saw that it was indeed a duet played by Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng. Behind them stood a young girl named Chu Fian. Zhao Mingyuan looked around and sure enough, Ling Hu Chong and Yilin Little Nun were nearby. Zhao Mingyuan first concealed his figure and never walked out. Afterwards, the plot unfolded as scheduled. Fei Bin, the great Songyang Hand of the Songs Han sect, is chasing and killing Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng here. Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng were already seriously injured and on the brink of death, but they just held on and finished playing this piece together. Now that my wish has been fulfilled, I have run out of oil and have no strength to stand up. Chu Fian stood forward and took out a pair of short swords from his arms to stab Fei Bin. Fei Bin chuckled and his long sword circled around, slapping it against her right short sword. Chu Fian's right arm was sore and numb, with a sharp pain in the tiger's mouth. He quickly released his right short sword. Fei Bin's long sword swung diagonally and flipped backwards. With a clap, Chu Fian's left short sword was shaken off and flew several meters away. Fei Bin's long sword had pointed to her throat and he smiled at Chu Yang, saying, Elder Chu, I will first pierce your granddaughter's left eye blind, then cut off her nose, and then cut off both of her ears. Chu Fian let out a loud cry, leaped forward, and collided with the long sword. Fei Bin's long sword contracted rapidly, his left index finger pointed out, and Chu Fian flipped over and fell. Fei Bin laughed heartily and said, There are many evil ways and evil deeds. Even if you want to die, it's not so easy. It's better to stab your left eye blind first before speaking. He picked up his long sword and was about to stab Chu Fian's left eye. Suddenly, someone behind him shouted, Stay here. Fei Bin was surprised and quickly turned around, waving his sword to protect himself. He didn't know that Ling Hu Chong and Yilin had been hiding behind the rocks for a long time, motionless. Otherwise, with his martial arts, no one would have been able to get close and not notice. Under the moonlight, a young man stood with his hands crossed over his waist. Fei Bin asked, Who are you? Ling Hu Chong said, Little nephew, Ling Hu Chong from Huashan sect, See Master Fei. He bowed and saluted, his body swaying and he couldn't stand still. Fei Bin asked Ling Hu to kill Chu Fian, but Ling Hu Chong turned a deaf ear. Fei Bin then said that the two of them were colluding with the demon cult and had become friends with it, but could not stay. He drew his sword and charged towards Ling Hu. Ling Hu Chong stood unsteadily, not even Fei Bin's opponent. Fei Bin brushed his three consecutive swords, causing him to face danger. Zhao Mingyuan saw this but had to take action. Although Mr. Mo is nearby during the night rain in Xiaoxiang, Ling Hu Chongyi Lin will not be in trouble, and Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng are also hopeless. But if he doesn't take action, Chu Fian will definitely die. After all, Chu Fian came from the demon sect, but Mr. Mo did not have the intention to save him. Perhaps he even harbored resentment towards Chu Yang as an elder of the demon sect to seduce people from the Hengshan sect, and thus vented his anger on Chu Fian. Zhao Mingyuan thought that although Chu Fian came from the demon cult, he had never heard of any malicious or hurtful behavior. Moreover, judging from his words and actions, he may be mischievous and cunning, but he is by no means an evil person. Moreover, 
When Chu Yangye's grandson saved Ling Hu Chang's life, Zhao Mingyuan could not sit idly by and let her die. Moreover, he had once told her that because she saved Ling Hu Chang's life, the Huashan sect would have a retribution, but he could not eat his words and become fat. Who dares to harm my senior brother? Don't stop. Zhao Mingyuan's voice came before he arrived. Fei Bin suddenly heard someone coming and his sword moves stopped, but he also missed the last chance to harm Ling Hu Chong. Fei Bin immediately recognized Zhao Mingyuan as the disciple of the Huashan sect who was blocking the Lu family in the Lu mansion. At that time, he felt that Zhao Mingyuan had caused great damage to the Songs Han sect and wished to kill him on the spot, but due to the presence of Yubuchuan. Now that he has fallen into his own trap, isn't it that heaven has helped me? Simply silence them together, without any disguise, and wield a sword to stab Zhao Mingyuan. Zhao Mingyuan was already prepared, but he didn't panic at all. He drew his sword to resist and guarded the door. Since Mr. Mo, the night rain in Xiaoxiang, is nearby, and he is probably also present at the Lu mansion. If Ling Hu Chongyi Lin is in trouble and he still knows how to take action, then he is determined not to let his help to the Lu family cause any trouble. This is the first time since Zhao Mingyuan descended the mountain that he has encountered such a life and death battle, and he knows he has taken it too far in a fight. Even though Mr. Mo is nearby, Fei Bin has excellent martial arts skills and is afraid that a careless move could take his own life, making it impossible to rescue him. At this moment, Zhao Mingyuan also calmed down in the shadow of death, showcasing all he had learned in one move. Fei Bin has profound internal skills, skilled moves, and rich experience, and Zhao Mingyuan has learned a lot from him. Many of the loopholes in the moves, as well as the connection issues between move transitions, have been identified by the opponent, seizing the opportunity to launch a fierce attack. Fortunately, Zhao Mingyuan's move was extremely fast, and he caught the loophole in this move. He immediately stepped back and took another move. But he was still beaten to the point of only being able to parry, with no strength to fight back. He retreated step by step to Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng, unable to retreat. Suddenly, a sound of the Hu Qin sounded, which was desolate and made people want to cry upon hearing it. I knew it was Mr. Mo from Xiaoxiang Night Rain who had arrived, and I thought he had already arrived nearby. Seeing that Zhao Mingyuan couldn't resist, he appeared and took action. Mr. Mo took advantage of Fei Bin's lack of attention, and the cold light suddenly flashed. He already had a thin and narrow long sword in his hand, and fiercely thrust it back at Fei Bin's chest. This move is extremely fast and dreamy, which is the ultimate move in the 13 moves of cloud and mist in Hengshan. Fei Bin was greatly shocked and quickly retreated. With a hissing sound, a long cut had been made in his chest by the sharp sword. His clothes were torn apart, and his chest muscles were also cut. Although the injury was not severe, he was already full of anger and shock, and his sharpness was greatly diminished. Fei Bin immediately stabbed each other with his sword, but Mr. Mo took the lead with his sword, and his later moves continued. A thin sword, like a spirit snake, trembled incessantly, thrusting back and forth in Fei Bin's sword light, only forcing him to repeatedly retreat, unable to utter a word of scolding. Chu Yang, Lu Jingfeng, Ling Huchong, and Zhao Mingyuan were all shocked and dizzy when they saw Mr. Mo's sword moves changing like ghosts and ghosts. Lu Jingfeng studied martial arts with him and became his senior brother for decades, but he never expected that his senior brother's swordsmanship would be so exquisite. Although Zhao Mingyuan knew that Fei Bin was by no means a match for Mr. Mo. But I didn't expect Mr. Mo's swordsmanship to be so mysterious. A little bit of blood splashed out between the two long swords. Fei Bin moved and leaped, trying his best to parry, but could not escape the sword light of Mr. Mo. The blood gradually splashed into a red circle around the two of them. Suddenly, Fei Bin let out a long scream and jumped up high. Mr. Mo took two steps back, inserted his long sword into Hu Qin, turned around, and walked away. A song called Night Rain in Xiaoxiang sounded behind the pine trees, gradually fading away. 
After Fei Bin jumped up, he immediately fell and a blood arrow shot upwards like a gushing spring in his chest. Just then, he engaged in a fierce battle and mobilized the internal power of the Song's Han sect. After being hit by the sword in his chest, his internal power did not dissipate, and blood suddenly spurted out from his wound, which was both eerie and terrifying. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Laughing Proud in the Jianghu You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Laughing Proud in the Jianghu After Fei Bin's death, Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng, like the original work, took out the Xiao Jianghu score and handed it over to Ling Huchong and Zhao Mingyuan, hoping to pass it on and not become the swan song like Guangling San. The difference is that Chu Fian is still alive this time, crying and begging Grandpa not to leave. Chu Yang had no choice but to ask Ling Huchong and Zhao Mingyuan to take care of her, hoping to safely send her to Luoyang and hand her over to one of his relatives and friends for care. Zhao Mingyuan understood that since it was Luoyang, it must be Saint Reningying. He didn't want them to have a relationship, but he also agreed. Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng's wishes were fulfilled, and they could no longer hold on. They smiled at each other and passed away. The four of them had anticipated, but were not surprised. Although Chu Fian was shedding tears, he also joined forces with the three and buried the bodies of both of them and Fei Bin. Zhao Mingyuan looked at their graves and thought to himself, Xiao Ao Jianghu, Xiao Ao Jianghu. It's easy to say, but it's not easy to do. How can we be considered as proud of the world? Like Chu Yang and Lu Jingfeng, their ending already tells us the answer. Is it like Ling Hu Chong in the original work? I think that Ling Hu Chong has probably given up on the martial arts world, so why talk about being arrogant? Zhao Mingyuan's arrogant smile in his heart is probably like Zhang Sanfeng of Wudang. Defeat all the invincible opponents in the world, leaving all opponents dead. Suppress the world alone, and leave everything to the disciples. This kind of situation is probably the only way to call Xiaoao Jianghu. It's just not perfect enough, after all, no one shares it. No matter how high you stand, it will only make you feel lonely. After resting for a while, Ling Hu Chang's wound pain slightly eased. He took out the sheet music of Laughing Proud in the Jianghu from his pocket and flipped through it. He saw that the whole book was filled with strange and ancient characters, and he couldn't recognize a single word. He had limited knowledge of writing, and was unaware that the score of the seven string Qin was originally composed of peculiar characters. He also realized that the characters in the score were ancient and difficult, and he had not read them himself. He casually carried the booklet into his pocket. Looking up, he let out a deep breath and thought to himself, Uncle Lu made friends and gave away his entire life and fortune for his friends. Although he made friends with elders in the demon sect, the two of them were brave and righteous, truly admirable as strong men. Uncle Lu washed his hands today and wanted to withdraw from the martial arts world, but for some reason, he ended up forming a grudge against the Song's Han sect. It's really strange. Zhao Mingyuan saw this and said to Ling Hu Chong, I don't think you're interested in music scores either. Why don't you let me take a look and find a suitable successor for it, so as not to dust the pearl? Ling Hu Chong was right in his heart, and Zhao Mingyuan liked to read books and was famous on Mount Hua. This move was not surprising, and it was useless to hold it by himself. Finding a suitable owner for it was also a troublesome task, so he handed the Xiaoao Jianghu Qin score to Zhao Mingyuan. Zhao Mingyuan caressed the proud martial arts music sheet and thought to himself, Senior brother, I've been putting all my efforts into it for you. How can you repay me? This music sheet has caused you a lot of trouble, and you were mistaken by the Golden Blade Wang family for an exorcism sword sheet. Although you met Ren Yingying through this, you also gained a reputation for colluding with the demon sect and were eventually expelled from the Huashan sect. It's better not to know each other. I'll handle this Xiaoao Jianghu Qin score, don't worry. It's definitely not because of Ren Yingying Zhao Mingyuan was thinking about something when he heard a hurried sound of footsteps. He looked up and saw that it was Aunt Yilin. Why did you come back alone, Ling Hu Chong? 
Didn't you just be with Ling Hu Chong? Zhao Mingyuan wondered. He had just pulled Chu Fi in and gave them a space to be alone. Where did Ling Hu Chong go after only a while? Yilin said, just now Ling Hu Chong said he had an urgent matter and left first. He asked you to take care of Chu Fian and me, and send us both to Hengshan City. After a few words of explanation, he hurriedly left. I don't know what's going on, but there are still injuries on his body. His tone was quite worried. Zhao Mingyuan suddenly remembered that if he hadn't changed the plot himself, Ling Hu Chong would have been nearby, at the hands of Mu Gaofeng, saving Lin Pingji's parents and hearing their last words. Alas, I tried my best to help him, but he took the initiative to jump into the pit and couldn't stop it. What else do I have? Even if Xiao Mingyuan rushed over now, it would be too late. Why not send Chu Fian and Yi Lin to Hengshan City first? Otherwise, it's just the two of them staying. If they encounter someone from the Songshan sect again, there might be danger. Zhao Mingyuan's previous efforts were not in vain. Zhao Mingyuan ultimately sent the two of them to the Hengshan sect headquarters. Chu Fian's identity was not yet known, and Abbas Dingyi was overjoyed to see Yilin return safely. She didn't mind taking care of the child for a while. After arranging Chu Fian, Zhao Mingyuan returned to the city. At this moment, the sky was approaching dawn, and there was a loud bang ahead. A fireworks exploded for half a day, transforming into a silver-white long sword that stayed in mid-air for a while before slowly falling. After descending more than ten zhang, it turned into a shooting star in the sky. This is the signal rocket for the Huashan sect leader to summon disciples. Zhao Mingyuan hurried to meet up. As we approached, we saw a local temple. Upon entering the temple, we saw that all the senior brothers were already here. Lin Pingji was lying on the bodies of his parents, crying loudly. Everyone felt pity upon seeing it. Yu Buqiuan saw Lin Pingji crying uncontrollably and said, Pinger, stop crying. It's important to take care of your parents' affairs. Ling Hu Chong was about to reveal Lin Jinnan's last words in public, but Zhao Mingyuan had no time to cut it off and still spoke out to Xianyang Lane in Fuzhou. It seems that Ling Hu Chang's hit should be a disaster, and Zhao Mingyuan has no choice but to do his best. Afterwards, Yu Buqiuan arranged for his second senior brother, Lao Dino, to go to Hengshan City to buy coffins, gather the bodies of Lin Jinnan and his wife, handle their funeral, and prepare to return to Huashan. Zhao Mingyuan thought to himself that if he returned to Huashan, he would punish Ling Hu Chong for facing the wall and pondering for a year. He happened to take advantage of this time to wander the martial arts world and also took away the anti-evil sword manual. So Zhao Mingyuan told his master Chu Fian about it, stating that he had agreed to send her to Luoyang to visit his family. Moreover, during this downhill training, I also found that I still have many shortcomings, so I wanted to travel in the martial arts world and practice more. I also hoped for the permission of my master. Yu Buqiuan looked at Zhao Mingyuan and said, You honor, you have been mature since childhood and act cautiously. I can rest assured of you, and you are not young. If you have this intention, then go and travel. Some things can only be truly understood through personal experience. Then he elaborated on some things to pay attention to when wandering the martial arts world. After thanking his master, Zhao Mingyuan said goodbye. When Zhao Mingyuan returned to Hengshan City, the Hengshan faction was already preparing to leave and return to Hengshan. The group of heroes who participated in the Golden Bowl wash hands had already left. Zhao Mingyuan took Chu Fian and headed towards Luoyang. The journey was relatively stable. After all, Chu Fian was born lively. Although he was sad and silent for a few days due to Chu Yang's death, his youthful nature finally came to life in a few days. The relationship between the two also became closer, and Chu Fian kept calling out, Brother Zhao, and, Brother Zhao, like Orioles all day, which made people feel happy. Zhao Mingyuan felt that although he took some risks, it was worth seeing her live so well. Chu Fian chuckled and said, Brother Zhao, I came to Luoyang to visit a sister. 
she is so beautiful. It's not an exaggeration to say she's the best in the world and the most beautiful. Brother Zhao, do you want to see her? I'm not, I'm not, don't talk nonsense. Zhao Mingyuan repeatedly refused. Women only affect the speed at which I draw my sword. Without women in my heart, drawing my sword is natural. The first sword in the world is my pursuit. Swordsmen have never had women in their hearts. For a moment, the air was filled with a joyful atmosphere. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Ren Yingying. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Ren Yingying. Soon the two arrived at Luoyang City. Chu Fian seems to have been here before and is quite familiar with it. He walked forward with ease and familiarity. After passing through several small streets, we arrived at a narrow alley. At the end of the alley, there is a large green bamboo grove swaying in the wind, elegant and natural. I believe this is Green Bamboo Lane. As soon as the two of them stepped into the alley, they could hear the tinkling sound of the chin. Someone was playing the chin, and the alley was cool and peaceful, as if it were two different worlds from the city of Luoyang outside. At this moment, with a clang, a string suddenly snapped, and the sound of the piano stopped. An elderly voice said, Your esteemed guest is wasting his time living in a humble abode. I wonder if you have any advice. Chu Fian replied, Grandpa Zhu is me, I am Fian. So it's not smoke, an old man walked out of the small house on the right and said with a smile, come in now. Zhao Mingyuan saw that the green bamboo wang was slightly hunched, with sparse hair on his head and big hands and feet, but his spirit was very vigorous. He immediately bowed and said, young Zhao Mingyuan, pay respects to the senior. The green bamboo wang chuckled and said, I'm just a few years old. You don't need to be polite. Come in, come in. Zhao Mingyuan followed him into the small cottage and saw several tables and chairs, none of which were made of bamboo. There was a black bamboo hanging on the wall, with vertical and horizontal strokes and ink stains, giving off a sense of forest. There is a yao chin and a flute on the table. Although there are not many decorations, they are quite elegant and make people forget the customs. It is known that the person living here must be an elegant person. Self-reliant, independent from the world, and befriending others through playing qin and shao is indeed an ideal life that people aspire to. The turmoil in the martial arts world is treacherous, but Green Bamboo Lane seems like a paradise, and the green bamboo wang in the alley is a recluse who escapes from the world and avoids chaos. This is the elegance of the ancients, this is the life they want to live, rather than rushing up and down every day to practice martial arts and swords like themselves. Unfortunately, I am just working hard and it is not yet time for me to rest. It may not be arrogant to say that one's ambitions have not been rewarded, but one's goal is indeed to surpass 99% of the people in the martial arts world, and one still needs to work hard. Young Xia, please rest here and taste our new tea. The green bamboo wang turned to Chu Fian and said, Auntie is waiting for you inside. You can go. Chu Fian quickly ran in after hearing this. Zhao Mingyuan looked up and saw that there seemed to be a person sitting inside, but the bamboo curtains separated him but he couldn't see clearly. Chu Fian threw himself into the man's arms and burst into tears, woo woo. My grandfather is gone. 555, immediately, I heard a low voice of comfort coming from inside. Zhao Mingyuan naturally wouldn't be misled by the sound of Lu Wang's aunt. He knew that it was Ren Yingying, the saint of the sun and moon cult, sitting inside. Just by her posture and tone, one can imagine that she must be a stunning beauty. It seems that this female lead must be extraordinary. However, Zhao Mingyuan does not have the same special mentality of being a must-win for the female protagonist as other travelers, after all, he knows a common truth in all worlds. Women are all troubles. The more beautiful a woman is, the greater the trouble. And the troubles brought by beauties like Ren Yingying are almost the top in the world. Go and see what the protagonist Ling Huchong did in the original work. 
Save Ren Wishing, evil spirits gather to attack Shaolin Temple, and surround and kill the world's number one Dongfang Invincible. One by one, these things are one by one, and which one is not something that will inevitably die with a slight mistake. If it weren't for the protagonist's halo, Ling Hu Chong would have died several times. It's better to leave these matters to Ling Hu Chong. Zhao Mingyuan dare not provoke such women. If it is really provoked, it may not be beautiful to leave this world with worries when completing the task. Moreover, there are countless beauties in all the heavens and realms. Why give up the entire forest for the sake of one tree? It's better to complete the task early and become the number one in the world, as more and better beauties are waiting for you. Zhao Mingyuan was thinking about it when a sound came from inside the bamboo curtain, but it was Ren Yingying who saved Chu Fian's life and safely sent her to Luoyang, expressing his gratitude. Zhao Mingyuan said that Chu Fian and his grandfather saved his senior brother Ling Hu Chong. How could the Huashan sect not repay them? It's just that master brother Ling Hu Chong is currently injured and cannot be sent away, so I'm just serving as my junior brother. Moreover, it is the duty of us in the martial arts world to lend a helping hand when facing injustice. I naturally cannot see Chu Fian being harmed like this, but I cannot bear to thank him. Then, Zhao Mingyuan said that when he came over just now, he heard the sound of a chin, but he had a score book here, which was created by Chu Fian's grandfather Chu Yang and his close friend. If I really want to thank myself, I want to listen to their ensemble again. I rushed over late and didn't hear the whole piece. Speaking, he took out the Xiaoao Jianghu score from his arms and handed it to the Green Bamboo Wang. The Green Bamboo Wang, upon hearing that it was a score, reached out and took it over. After flipping through the sheet music for a few glances, the Green Bamboo Wang let out a, hey, sound and said, this sheet music is so strange that it's hard to understand. He then took out a Jiawei Tongqin and only heard the sound of the piano, elegant and beautiful. Not long after, the piano suddenly rose in pitch, louder and louder, with an extremely sharp sound. With a loud clang, one string broke, a few more notes were raised, and with a clang, another string broke. Green Bamboo Wing said, I'll try this bamboo flute score again. Then he took out a purple bamboo flute and played it. At first, it was melodious and melodious, with lingering emotions. But later on, the sound of the flute became lower and lower, almost imperceptible. After playing a few more notes, the sound of the flute became hoarse, with very unpleasant waves. The green bamboo master sighed and said, How can such a low bass be played? The Qin and Xiao scores must be fake, but the composer is just joking and trying to make things mysterious. I will carefully study and refine them. Zhao Mingyuan said, Where is this fake? It was created by Chu Fian's grandfather Chu Yang and his close friend. We have heard them playing a piece together before, how could it be fake? Chu Fian also chimed in and said, Of course it's true. It took my grandfather and Uncle Lu years of hard work to co-create this piece of music. It's a pity to think that after their death, the score could also become a swan song like Guangling San. So he wanted to pass on this score. Sister, why don't you take a look? Grandpa said that the difficulty of this score is too high, and if anyone else in this world can play this score again, it's probably only you, sister. Chu Fian said and walked out, bringing the score from the hands of Green Bamboo Wang. The woman let out a hum, and the sound of the piano began. She adjusted the strings, paused for a moment, as if replacing the broken strings, then adjusted the strings again, and began playing. At the beginning, it was played the same as the green bamboo wang, but later on, as it rose higher and higher, the melody of the chin unexpectedly took on a perilous journey, lifting lightly and effortlessly turning it up. This piece is sometimes passionate and sometimes gentle and elegant. Although Zhao Mingyuan is not familiar with the music theory, he feels that although the melody played by Ren Yingying is the same as that played by Chu Yang, there is a significant difference in taste. The melody played by Ren Yingying is calm and moderate, making one feel only the beauty of music, but without the passionate excitement of the melody. After playing for a long time, 
the melody of the chin gradually slowed down, as if the music could not stay far away. Instead, it was like the person playing the chin had walked several tens of zhang away and then several miles away, with subtle details almost imperceptible. At a moment when the sound of the chin seemed to be unstoppable, there were one or two extremely low and delicate sounds of the xiao playing beside the chin. The sound of the flute gradually echoed, as if the player was slowly approaching as they played. The sound of the flute is clear and beautiful, fluctuating high and low, with light and loud sounds. When it reaches its lowest point, it hovers for a few times before sinking again. Although it is extremely low and thin, each syllable is still clear and audible. Gradually, there are occasional jumps of pearls and jade in the bass, clear and short, rising and falling one after another, and the complex sound gradually increases. At first, it splashed like a spring, then like a group of flowers competing for beauty, with clusters of flowers and birds singing in between. Gradually, a hundred birds left, and spring flowers fell, but... Upon hearing the sound of the rain, it was a desolate and solemn scene. The drizzle was continuous, with a hint of absence, and finally everything fell silent. The sound of the flute paused for a long time, and then everyone woke up like a dream. Although Xiao Mingyuan didn't understand rhythm, he couldn't help but feel intoxicated. The green bamboo wang is even more like a lost soul. Zhao Mingyuan said, this young lady is indeed very clever. The last time I heard two people playing the qin and xiao, one playing the qin and the other playing the xiao, was playing this laughing and proud Jianghu song. Although her skills may not be comparable to the young ladies, the two of them played together and had a unique flavor. Before he could finish his sentence, there were three resounding sounds of the qin in the green bamboo grove. Ren Yingying's voice was extremely low, as if he could vaguely hear her say, qin and xiao ensemble, where in the world can we find this person? Chu Fian said, Brother Zhao, do you want to learn to play the piano? Zhao Minyuan knew Chu Fian's intentions and knew she had a heart to match. However, I had no such thoughts, so I said, on that day, the two seniors handed over the score to me, with the intention of passing it on to future generations and not forgetting it. I just learned from this young lady's exquisite skills in playing the qin and xiao. I am deeply grateful that this song has met Allah, so I asked this young lady to accept the score. I can fulfill the promise of the composer and fulfill some of my wishes. Therefore, my wish has been fulfilled, and I hope to take good care of Fian. I still have important matters to attend to, so I will not disturb you. I also hope for Haihan to stand up and prepare to leave. Chu Fian ran out from inside, dragging his clothes and feet with reluctance, but there was nothing to say. Over there, Ren Yingying called in the green bamboo wang and explained a few words, then said to let Zhao Mingyuan wait for a moment, and said there was a gift of gratitude, hoping there was no need to refuse. Zhao Mingyuan thought to himself, what kind of people are they? They probably don't want to owe anyone any favors. He doesn't care what they send or receive, so as not to get entangled. If it's not accepted, it's not good to keep people thinking about it in their hearts. After a while, the green bamboo wing walked in and said, Since you still have to hurry, I am willing to give you a good horse as a substitute for your journey. In addition, I have some dry food prepared for you to eat on the way. I hope you don't refuse. Zhao Mingyuan thought for a moment, but did not refuse. Getting up and going out, he came to the yard to take a look. Huo was a fine horse from thousands of miles away. With his tall physique and smooth fur, although Zhao Mingyuan didn't understand horses, he could see that this horse was probably worth a lot. However, for a wealthy woman like Ren Yingying, it's probably just a drop in the bucket. So Zhao Mingyuan didn't refuse and stood up on his horse, saying, The road to the martial arts world is far, and we have a chance to see each other again. He then rode away without any hesitation. Only three figures remained, staring at his scattered back in silence. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Seeking Seclusion and Exploring Secrets You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 
Seeking seclusion and exploring secrets after leaving Luoyang City, Zhao Mingyuan rode westward and rushed towards the direction of Zhongnan Mountain. This is to go to the former Chuanjin sect site and the nearby ancient tomb sect site. I'm not sure if we can find the Chongyang inscription, or if we hope to have other gains. When he was hungry midway, Zhao Mingyuan stopped to take a short rest. Open the bundle hanging from the saddle of the green bamboo wang and prepare to eat some dry food. When I opened the package, there were indeed several boxes of dim sum. It seemed that the package was quite exquisite. When I opened the box, the fragrance was overwhelming. The dim sum of different colors and flavors were placed separately, probably the time.honored brand in Luoyang City. There is also a small bundle, bulging and bulging, which doesn't seem to be food inside. Zhao Mingyuan felt strange and upon opening it, it turned out to be filled with gold and silver. The ingots of ingots shone brightly, making people dizzy. Zhao Mingyuan counted carefully and found that there were two ingots of gold worth about a hundred tails, and about five hundred tails of silver worth a total of about one thousand five hundred tails of silver. An ordinary family of four may not necessarily spend ten tails of silver per year, which is enough for Zhao Mingyuan to be extravagant for a long time. You truly deserve to be a rich woman. Zhao Mingyuan sighed, but he didn't pay much attention, it was just an outsider. Arriving near the Zhongnan mountain, Zhao Mingyuan inquired about the Chuanjin sect site among the locals, but he didn't know much about it. After all, it was already two or three hundred years ago. In the end, Zhao Mingyuan used his banknote ability and asked a local document to take him to read the local county annals, which led him to make some discoveries. I searched around to find the ruins of the Chongyang Palace of the Chuanjin sect back then. Unfortunately, it is already very old and there are no ruins left. Only some traces of the foundation prove that there were also buildings here. As for the nearby ancient tomb sect, the so dot called water pool is even more difficult to find. Unable to do anything, Zhao Mingyuan could only use his banknote ability again and hire dozens of nearby hunters to search for water pools, ancient tombs, and any strange looking bees near the Chongyang Palace. In addition, dozens of mountain people were hired to dig down from the site of the Chongyang Palace, perhaps to discover underground palaces and the like. After tossing around for nearly a month, I almost flipped through the entire Chongyang Palace, but still found nothing. As for the ancient tomb sect, no trace has been found. Time is truly the most terrifying thing. The first sect in the world, the Chuanjin sect, and the legendary Divine Eagle Heroes, are now nowhere to be found. Where is the beautiful shadow of the ancient tomb now? There is no Divine Eagle in the world. It seems that the legend of the Condor heroes has finally become a swan song. I originally thought that when Zhang Wuji was born, the descendants of the ancient tomb had wandered in the martial arts world, perhaps they could inherit one. Unexpectedly, expectations will eventually become empty. That's right, over the course of hundreds of years, the stars have changed and even dynasties have transformed from the Song dynasty to the Ming dynasty, let alone just one sect. No matter how magnificent you are, you will shine brightly in the world, and in the end, you will also be red, pink, and white-skinned, no matter how proud you are, sitting on thousands of miles of land will eventually turn into a pile of lust. So, immortality is the eternal pursuit of humanity and the greatest desire of all. Since Zhao Mingyuan has this opportunity, he will never give up. Then I should go to the next place myself, I don't know what's going on there. That place is also related to the Divine Eagle Hero, which is the Sword Demon Ruins outside Xiangyang City. Speaking of which, not only Yang Guo has been there before, but perhaps Feng Qingyang has also been there, after all, the name Dugu Jiujian is very imaginative. It's not true that Feng Qingyang went to dig the tomb of Sword Demon Dugu Chiushi. What Yang Guo didn't do back then, Feng Qingyang did it. Of course, it could also be as people speculate that the Dugu Nine Swords were passed down by the family of Dugu Chiobai in the past, or that Dugu Chiobai had received disciples and spread them to the outside world. After all, Feng Qingyang is also considered the protagonist of the previous generation, and having such luck is normal. 
Do as you please. Since there was nothing left in Zhongnan Mountain, Zhao Mingyuan rushed to the outside of Xiangyang City. The method still used the ability of money, and soon a local hunter said he had seen this strange snake with long horns on its head in a valley, so he asked the hunter to take him there. The hunter, however, refused to go there, saying that there were many snakes of this kind in the valley, and they walked like the wind, with strong toxicity. They were afraid of accidents and unwilling to go. Zhao Mingyuan understood that he needed to increase money. He immediately used his money-making ability to advance his skills and increase money. Sure enough, the problem was only due to insufficient money. After Zhao Mingyuan doubled the price and paid half of the deposit first, the hunter quickly agreed. Of course, if he doesn't agree, the nearby hunters will immediately snatch business. No wonder many of the martial arts skills in novels and TV dramas are excellent but foolish. Now Zhao Mingyuan also understands some of them. After all, in the world of martial arts, having strong martial arts skills can almost solve all problems, thus forming path dependence. Whatever you do depends on force to solve it, and you don't need to use your brain at all. As long as you practice hard, you can do it. I am not the same, using silver can solve problems, but I still want to use this method to solve problems next time, forming path dependence. I don't think of any other way. Zhao Mingyuan thought to himself that he should take it as a warning not to practice until the end, as he would become that kind of foolish and straightforward person. However, of course, since this method is useful now, it cannot be ignored. Of course, one cannot enter the mountain without preparation. Zhao Mingyuan gave the hunter some money to buy some realgar and other snake repellent and detoxifying drugs. The hunter said he still needs to bring some specialized snake catching tools, so why not enter the mountain tomorrow? Forget it, he is a professional, so listen to him. Zhao Mingyuan is naturally not a stubborn person, and he also carries the Baiyun Bear Gall pill gifted by little sister Yilin as a guarantee. However, after saving Xiaoni, on the way back to Hengshan, it was gifted by Yilin. Baiyun Xiongdan pill not only has a miraculous effect on treating internal and external injuries, but also has a miraculous effect on detoxification. The next morning, Zhao Mingyuan entered the deep mountain under the guidance of the hunter. Along the way, the hunter gave a brief introduction, stating that his surname was Zhang, and the villagers called him Hunter Zhang. He was the most capable hunter near Xiangyang, and only he dared to venture so deep into the mountain. Turning around seven or eight times, he flipped over several hills. It was almost noon when Hunter Zhang finally pointed to the valley ahead and said, It's the strange snake with horns on its head that we often see in that valley. We can't move forward, it's really too dangerous inside. Okay, then you can find another snake like that for me to see and make sure you're not lying to me. Even if your task is completed, you won't lose a penny. Upon hearing this, Hunter Zhang had no choice but to help Zhao Mingyuan find the snake. Sure enough, the profession was different. In no time, Hunter Zhang followed the snake path and identified a place where snakes often gather, taking Zhao Mingyuan with him. Sure enough, I saw a snake with flesh horns on its head, emitting a faint golden light all over its body, which was no different from the description of the Bodhisattva snake. Zhao Mingyuan slowly approached and used his full power to cut off the seven-inch snake with a sword. Then he asked Hunter Zhang to go and retrieve the snake's gallbladder. Sure enough, he is a professional. With just one cut, he found the right spot and took out a deep purple snake gallbladder. Zhao Mingyuan quickly asked Zhang how to take the snake bile of the hunter, what are the contraindications? Sure enough, Hunter Zhang was not aware of the uniqueness of the Bodhisattva snake, only stating that snake bile has certain effects such as dispelling wind, dehumidifying, cooling, and improving eyesight. Eating raw is also acceptable, but it's best to soak it in wine for the best medicinal effect. The Bodhisattva snake, once seen in Buddhist scriptures, emits a faint golden light throughout its body. The head walks like the wind, extremely difficult to capture. Its gallbladder is deep purple, and after taking it, it immediately feels refreshed and its strength can also increase significantly. 
This was not a suitable place, so the two of them returned to the small mountain village where Hunter Zhang's house was located with the Bodhisattva snake. Zhao Mingyuan gave Hunter Zhang a considerable amount of silver, stating that he would stay here for a period of time and ask him to help by a small courtyard. Sure enough, he had money and was good at handling things. In no time, Hunter Zhang found a clean farmyard. And let Hunter Zhang handle the Bodhisattva snake, eliminate its toxicity, add some mountain mushrooms, boil it into snake soup, and bring it over. The snake soup made by adding mountain mushrooms is indeed very delicious. Zhao Mingyuan didn't even have a drop of soup left, but unfortunately, after sitting cross-legged, it didn't feel any different from before. It seems that snake meat has no effect, so we have to try snake bile. Eating raw snake bile is indeed extremely foul-smelling, but in order to become stronger, there is no way. It's not shabby. After taking snake bile, he ran his internal skills again and indeed grew faster than usual. Zhao Mingyuan was overjoyed and ultimately achieved nothing. End of this chapter